And good morning, it's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torch, thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This week talking Southwestern basketball with Coach Jerry Baumholt. He's in with us this morning. Coach, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Tim. Uh, boy, are you scraping the bottom of the barrel when you have to have this old fart come in here and well, be on Coach's Corner. It's, so. uh, it's a pleasure to have you in today. As always, nice talking with you. We've solved all the world's problems before we went on the air, so life is good. You uh, opened up the season with a win Wednesday night. We'll talk about that in just a minute. I kind of want to go back and reflect. I always do uh, with coaches about their season from a year ago and what you had and where you went through the summer and where you're at right now. 13-10 record a year ago. Talk about last year's team a little bit as you prepared for this year. Well, the big thing from last year, Tim, was that uh, we were in our uh, third year with a group of kids that we started with as when we came in with sophomores. and. You know, each year we tried to make some progress. We started with two wins, then eight wins, and then last year was 13. And even in those 13 wins, uh, we had five other games that we easily could have won that went down to the last possession, and we lost all five. Mm -hmm. So even though we went 13 and 10, we felt like it was a disappointment because there were some opportunities there that we did not take advantage of. Uh, and it was just the nature of that group of kids. Uh, they had not won. Uh, collectively as a group uh, in basketball at any level and uh, but we fought a lot of things we fought a lot of uh, mental issues and confident issues and uh, got to the end we put a little streak together right at the end of the season but never really did get to the point where I felt comfortable uh, and that's what's different about this group this group comes right in uh, having all played uh, uh, because of their youth they played mm -hmm. at different uh, grade levels but they've all been successful and so we have a group of kids this particular year meshed in with our two seniors that have been successful in the game of basketball and they do have a high confidence level and uh, it's you can just tell a difference you can tell a difference in practice we can tell a difference running our situations we can tell a difference when we go in or into the weight room uh, it's just it's nice to be around this group of kids that that really believe in themselves and uh, have the confidence level that they have you look at kids and, and over the course of the last however many years, they kids come in, they have different skill levels, but that mental approach that kids have to the game, does it ever change or should it ever change in order to get them prepared to play? Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of people around here that uh, were fans of Coach Knight and uh, whether you liked him or you didn't like him, he always said the mental to the physical in a game of basketball is 4-1. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm, the longer I'm in this game, the more I'm believing. That's, that's pretty dang on close because uh, you, can have, uh, you can have the kids with ability levels, but boy, if they don't have confidence in themselves and in their teammates, and, uh, you, you just tell, you can immediately tell when a, when a group meshes or when they feel like uh, uh, that they do have confidence in each other and a mistake won't kill you and somebody else will pick you up. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, the mental part of basketball is absolutely critical. And, and I'm not sure you can always teach that uh, to the level that coaches want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we work hard on doing things to get kids successful in drills. But you still got to have that background and you got to have those kids who have that winning instinct and that winning attitude confidence level that they've developed since the time they were uh, very very little and when kids come in with that as coaches you you notice it immediately and that's the group we have this year can you can you teach that I think you can teach it to a certain extent I think you can teach confidence uh, being successful in practice with mm -hmm. particular drills and so on and work your way through it but at some point in time um, you know kids have to do that in game situations and last year's group we never did in, in those crucial situations with the last possession of the game on the line, whether it be we were on defense or mm -hmm. whether it be we were on offense and we needed a score, we just never seem to have that. And sometimes it's just one guy, Tim. Yeah. Sometimes it's just one person that, get me the ball, I'll take care of it, or I'll be the defensive stopper, you won't have to worry, we'll get it done. Uh, but this year, we don't have one guy. We have collectively uh, a group of five, uh, plus our two guys off the bench that really have a high level of confidence. We saw it for the first time in the summer when we were playing our June schedule. Mm -hmm. And it's just continued on and, and gotten better. And uh, you know, 
when you're playing with young kids, you could fall flat on your face. We could do that tonight, right. you know, against Austin, Tim. But it's not going to be because of a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be because of a lack of execution or some other thing, but it's not going to be a confidence level. And I think there's a big difference in athletics between a kid that's cocky and a kid that's confident. Right. And coaches can read that pretty well, particularly coaches that have been around uh, for a long time. You know, some of the younger guys think they can read it, mm -hmm. uh, but guys that have been around for a while, there, there's a definite difference between a kid that's confident and a kid that's cocky. And our kids are confident. Do you uh, have you seen in, in in all your coaching? Have you seen kids? A lot of kids that have come in that wanted to be that one guy that give me the ball when the game's on the line, or I'll make the defensive stop if I have the ability to do that. Uh, those are few and far between, Tim. Mm -hmm. They really are. If you have if you have one, you're extremely lucky. Uh, you know, if you have two on the same team, my gosh, I, yeah. you can talk coaches across the state. They'd love to have uh, <laughs> that situation. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get those kind of kids very often, and you, you, sometimes you work on things like leadership and you try to make those kids, but again, there's something instinctive with some kids that they don't mind. You, you know, when you have that kind of kid, it's always a kid that's not afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. If you're not afraid to fail and you're afraid, you know, that, well, I, I don't want to do this because something might go wrong, then it's never going to work. you got to have that kid, and he's got to have that confidence that, hey, I can get the job done, and even if it doesn't work, give it to me next time, I'll get it done. And, you know, this this particular group has that. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's kind of, it sets the tone in practice. Mm -hmm. When when you have scenarios in practice, and we do a lot, a lot, Tim, of competition, uh, when our games are on the line, uh, we have individuals that you just know, give me the ball, or I'll take the best player on the other team, and mm -hmm. I'll make Dagon sure he's not the one that scores. And it's just—it's kind of neat to, to be surrounded by that situation. That's why I love these kids yeah. uh, so much that we have this year because we just have that mentality that, you know, again, we're not perfect by any right. means, but it's neat to be around them because they have a winning attitude. You, you, <clears throat> with boys or girls, doesn't matter. You, you always have the the effect that it's it's a whole lot easier to not win. Than it is to work hard to win. You got to change that mentality in order to be able to do that. And apparently, whatever you've done and now going into season four has been effective. Well, Tim, it's, you know, I, I always tell kids, I've said this for a long time, it's pretty easy to lose. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't have to do much. <laughs> uh, you know, and to have a loser's mentality in athletics, uh, I don't care what the sport is, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to work very hard. And, yeah. uh, you know, if you just want to be mediocre and average, it's, it's pretty easy to do that. I tell kids like that all the time in the classroom. You know, if you, don't, if you want to see, man, you don't have to do a whole lot of work. But it's those kids that, that want that next level, that, uh, you know, they're not satisfied with mm -hmm. being mediocre. And it's not all us. It's not all coaching. You sure. know, obviously we've had, we've had some change in, in kids as we, our feeder program is feeding kids in mm -hmm. um, and we've been lucky to, again to have the lower level kids that are coming in that are successful we got another group uh, as eighth graders this year Tim it's the same way they have a phenomenal attitude about them and the other thing we have that we've not had here uh, at Southwestern is we have a core group and when I say a core group you're talking 10 12 it's been a long time since we've had that many kids that are really dedicated to the game of basketball that they want to play, you know, uh, they want to find a way to play all year long. Now, mm -hmm. they do play other sports, right. but they want to find a way to get in the weight room, they want to find a way to get their shooting in, uh, their individual workouts in, in the summer. Uh, when you have that and you have that core group, you know your chances of being successful are a lot better just simply because you've got a group of kids who think it's every bit as important as you do. And mm -hmm. uh, again, that, that, that sets the ground rules for in, in pr pretty solid foundation for being able to be successful. Coach, I want to go back and, and kind of uh, hit on something you mentioned as before we went to break, and that's kids that, that are dedicated to basketball, but they, but they participate in other sports. How do you as a coach, how do you, how do you help them or do you help them find that balance or is it just up to them on how they approach it? You know, I, I'm probably a little unusual in that uh, when I talk to our kids about playing other sports, here's really what I tell them. And if you ask any of them, they'll say the same thing. 
if you can go help a program, <clears throat> then go. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just going to go to participate uh, and just be, you know, a, a, a spectator mm -hmm. and not give it your all and not be able to contribute in any way, shape, or form, then I feel like you're wasting your time. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Tim, this year the Kramer kid, Tyler Kramer, uh, who probably hasn't played soccer for I, I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. uh, he came to me, it wasn't halfway through, it was after they had played a few games and uh, he said, Coach, I want to play soccer. I said, you want to do what? He said, I want to play soccer. I said, no, we're not going <laughs> to. I said, why, why do you want to play soccer? Yeah. And he said, Coach, I've watched the soccer team and I think I'm a better athlete than some of the guys that are playing and I think I can help them. Mm, pretty, tar pretty tough to argue with. Yeah. He, he was right. right. And uh, he, he makes all conference mm -hmm. uh, and hadn't played soccer for yeah. forever. And that's pretty hard to argue with. Yeah. Uh, did I really want him to play? I didn't want him to take a chance of getting hurt, but right. as I told his parents and his grandparents and everybody else, the assistant coaches, as we're looking and scratching our head like, we don't need green plants. <laughs> but, you know, he went out there. He could he could get hurt first day of practice sure. in basketball. And yeah. So go do it. Go contribute. And he did. He did the same thing last year in springtime with baseball and a couple other other of our kids did the same thing. So my philosophy is probably a little different. Mm -hmm. um, if you can help other programs. And the other thing I get, Tim, that and all the really, really good basketball teams I've coached, I've always had to see, I've had some role players that have come from other sports and in those other sports they've learned to compete. Mm -hmm. And so it carries over. Not necessarily the skill right. that are involved in basketball, but <laughs> just, you know, earlier we were talking that mental part uh -huh. of just competing and learning how to compete and learning how to win. And every time we've had a group uh, of kids that have been successful in basketball, I can look back and there's been one or two or maybe even as many as three kids that have played other sports that have been successful in those sports mm -hmm. that have now come over to basketball and have contributed simply because they've learned how to compete in other sports. So I'm a little different. I'm yeah. not I'm not like some of the old timers where all they want their kids to do is play basketball and nothing else. Right. I, I don't think that's necessarily good. Uh, so we encourage them, but the big thing is we tell them, you know, pick a sport where you can help them. Right. Go somewhere. You know, if you're, you know, I'll give you an example again of this year, you know, Foster Methford and I mm -hmm. sit down and talked about. And last year in the springtime, uh, early summer, he played baseball. He hadn't played baseball for a while. And now he came and we talked early. He said, Coach, I think I might want to run track. Well, Foster might very well be the fastest kid mm -hmm. in school right? Uh, in just a flat out sprint. And, you know, if he goes and runs track, he's probably going to be the 100 and 200 guy for our track team. Sure. I think that'd be great. Yeah. So th those are things that we try to encourage. And again, if they can help other programs, we want them to go help. You get to the summer, you, you finish 13 and 10, you get to the summer. Do you have a plan of attack for the summer or irregardless to what your season is? Or do you have a plan of attack for the summer based on maybe what your wants and needs are for your team to do? As soon as our season's over, we sit down and we look at what are we going to do after spring break till the end of school? Because uh, you have a set of rules now that mm -hmm. the IHSA have that are uh, you're still in school, but you're out of your season. Mm -hmm. And then once the summer starts, you have a whole different set of rules. Right. So one of the things we tried to do, we looked at it, we have got to get our younger kids in the weight room and get strong enough so that they can play at the varsity level. And so from after spring break until the end of school, we had kids that just absolutely lived in the weight room. Uh, we made tremendous strength gains then. And then in the summer, we decided uh, we're going to take the month of June. We're going to play in two or three different shootouts. We're going to try in conjunction with the shootouts to go to team camp and play in the vicinity of 20 games. Uh -huh. Let's play 20 games against people that we normally don't play. Right. Uh, bigger schools, uh, let's see how we kind of line up. And so we played a 20 game schedule, counting our team camp and two different shootouts in the month of June. And that's when we first saw with this group that, hey, we, we think we got something really special here mm -hmm. because of the chemistry and because of the way they immediately fit into roles. Uh, didn't have to say a whole lot. Uh, and our leadership was fantastic. You know, our three co-captains, Coleman Jones and 
Tyler Kramer and Hunter Mefford are just great when it comes to getting things squared away, practices, but you saw that from the very beginning. Sure. And then once that happened, let's take the month of July off, give them a chance. But I knew then, Tim, because I went to Alabama for eight days and my daggone phone rang in Alabama wanting the gym open. And it was a little <laughs> tough for me to come back from Alabama and open the gym, so I had to get one of our other coaches to let them in and shoot. Normally, we just take the entire month mm -hmm. of July and we say, hey, go be a kid. Right. Enjoy vacation with your family and all that. But these kids, yeah. they just were relentless. And even when I got back, you know, here's my phone. I got 16 messages. Coach, can we get in the gym? Can we get in to shoot? Uh, and my wife said, and she just shook her head. I said, wait a minute now. This is what we've been waiting for. Right. This is not going to be considered a problem. This is <laughs> this is one of those pleasant. Right. You know, uh, I, I call them pains in the butt. Yeah. But uh, right. they were pleasant right. pains in the butt. Yeah. And so there were many nights, 8, 9, 10 o'clock. Of course, I only live a minute and a half from the gym. I'd go over and open the gym. Here you go. Here, here's this group of kids coming in to either shoot around or play or mm -hmm. whatever. So you, you knew then that this group was going to be really competitive and you know again we're, we're we still got some growing pains we're right. young and uh we don't do everything perfectly no. uh but boy you know it, like the other night you know we went i think it was 27 minutes or mm -hmm. something in that vicinity without turning the ball over. right you know you can't play high school basketball with two freshmen mm -hmm. and play that many minutes consecutively and not have something happen right we just we did an unbelievable job taking care of the basketball mm -hmm. uh, and I told him uh, yesterday at practice I said oh now you set a standard here yeah now it's gonna be a little tougher because you've shown you can do that mm -hmm. there's no reason we can't continue to do that and uh, and play at that level so what we want to be able to do uh, after watching these kids in the summer we want to try to play fast but play smart be aggressive uh, but we don't want to take big risk right let's don't don't try to make the perfect play. Mm -hmm. Let's just, uh, let's get down and, you know, every kid that we have in that starting lineup has something unique to offer to to us, both offensively and defensively. And that's what we're trying to put together and trying to use. So hopefully over the course of the next three or four games, we have to go on the road and play three in a row here. Yeah. We'll come back with some kind of assessment. And then by Christmas time, we'll have a pretty good indication of what our strengths and our weaknesses are. and then we can kind of build towards a tournament. And Coach, we, you mentioned the Madison game a little bit, the uh, first game of the season. Got a victory over Madison in the uh, Thanksgiving Eve game, 51 to 26 was the final score. You mentioned turnovers. They were at a minimum for the first two and a half quarters, nothing, and is that a surprise for you to see this team do something like that? Really not, Jim. We, we have uh, all five of our starters have played the guard position at one time or another. Mm -hmm. And they can all take care of the basketball. We we spent a lot of time on footwork. We spent a lot of time on little things, and they just did a miraculous job of carrying that over. Now again, we didn't we didn't shoot the ball as well as hopefully we're going to shoot it at times this season. Mm -hmm. But in terms of just fundamentals, not trying to make the perfect play, not trying to take high risk, uh, we were just able to take care of the basketball. Um, we probably forced a couple shots. Uh, uh, <coughs> Tyler Kramer and I talked about that yesterday, a little bit of practice. Uh, but when you have a kid of his ability level, uh, you know, with this group we got, it, I'm finding myself, uh, you, you got to give them a little more freedom mm -hmm. uh, just because they do have unique abilities, uh, probably more so than some of the teams that we've coached. Uh, but all in all, you know, to play as hard as we played on defense, uh, take care of the basketball. Uh, Battle them on the boards. We were able to to do that. Uh, you know, you're going to give yourself a pretty good chance to win. And you know, 17 years is a long time coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I told somebody after the game, the greatest thing that I thought of the entire evening was to watch that student body uh, when the game was over storm yeah. the floor because that feeling at Southwestern hadn't been there for I don't know how long. Yeah. And uh, it was just great to see not just our basketball kids, but all the kids mm -hmm. at that uh, at that school mm -hmm. finally feel like they're a part of something really special. But you know now that changes a little bit. Right. And as I told them yesterday, the bullseye is now on their back right. instead of elsewhere. And it's going to be interesting to see how this group responds to that because we're going to go to Austin tonight. You know, I watched them on film. They scored 78 points. They got three kids that can shoot it. Mm -hmm. And if we just go in thinking we got to show up and. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think we have that mentality. Right. We didn't see that mentality from this group in the summer. Uh, so hopefully that's not going to be the case with this group. And that they understand they got to go and play. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how the next three games, especially because they're all on the road, how this group responds to that. I'm going to go back and, and talk a second. You mentioned Tyler Kramer and, and, and his shooting ability. It kind of brings me to a point. If you get a kid like that that can, that can shoot the lights out, if, if he takes a bad shot, he still has the confidence to come back and continue to shoot the ball. Some kids don't have that ability to do. Well, it's not only that with him individually, but his teammates. Right. Uh, you know, they know that he can get on a streak uh, and they'll look for him. But, you know, I thought there was a, a short period of time where we kind of stood around and watched him a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that at practice yesterday and, uh, you know, immediately uh, our kids said, "Oh yeah, okay. Uh, we can't, we can't do that because it's great if he's hitting, but right. you know, if he hits a stretch where he misses a few shots in a row, we got to have somebody else that can take up the slack for us. So we have all of our kids. All five of those kids are capable of getting double figures mm -hmm. easily. Uh, so we don't want to be so one-dimensional uh, that we stand around and watch him sometimes. And, and I told him, and I, I, he would be the first to tell you that." Uh, it took him 25 shots to get 28 points. Normally, if Tyler's going to take 25 shots, he'll get he'll he'll score 35 or 40 points. Right. Uh, so he didn't shoot it as well as as he normally will. Uh, and then we got to have some other people that help take up the slack. And uh, when people play us a certain way, we'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but all in all, I, I just I was real pleased just from the standpoint that these kids had looked forward to playing that game mm -hmm. uh, for quite some time. Uh, and even though, you know, we start two freshmen, two juniors, and a senior, Tim, they, they thought from the beginning that if they play, they had a chance to win that basketball game. And uh, I think they proved to everybody they could do that. And it was, and it's, that's something that a handful of years ago wouldn't have the confidence to come in and do. No, the, the, the first two or three years we were here, right. uh, we, we could say we think we're gonna win, yeah. but deep down, you know, that, you remember, it wasn't that long ago, what, uh, four, three years ago, Tim? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the score was 60 to 20 over here at yeah. this gym, and they, they dumped on us pretty good. And then the, the next two years, we at least made it close and closed the gap a little bit right. before we were able to, to get over the hump this year. So these kids have taken their lumps from, yeah. from Madison, and uh, they were anxious to, to get back. But, you know, now we got to take that name off the jersey and uh, replace it with Austin. Right. And, you, you better come ready to play. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we're in the right mental frame as we come in this morning, get yeah. ready for our walkthrough and our shoot around, that they understand that. And, uh, and we'll go from there and hopefully be ready to play. At Austin tonight, at Shaw next Friday night, at Borden next Saturday night, New Washington at Carroll County, Jackson Dale, the JCIT. Um, schedule is, I mean, there's, there's some teams on here that's, that's going to be, that you will definitely want to compete with. Well, I think, again, the big thing is I think um, we also have that uh, new tournament right after Christmas at North Decatur. And mm -hmm. when that's over, when we get to the first of the year, we'll have enough games behind us and we will have played enough different kinds of teams, big, quick, zone, man, uh, all, all different approaches that we'll be able to sit back and say, okay, now here are our strengths, here are our weaknesses, let's, let's continue to, to emphasize our strengths, let's work on our weaknesses a little bit and see if we can't put things together so come January 1st we got that two month stretch to mm -hmm. try to get ourselves ready for the tournament and you know it's been a long time since Southwestern's won a game in sectional right. let alone even compete for one so again these kids have different goals mm -hmm. I think the conference is important to them right uh, the, the turkey shoot was important uh, like I said conference sectional mm -hmm. they have some goals that uh, realistically I think can be achieved at the other groups just probably weren't good enough yet. Right. And, uh, this group is, so it'll be interesting to see if we can get towards that. The coach, you mentioned the sectional. You guys are hosting this year. Yeah, I think that all that, that's a big thing. You know, whenever you get a chance to play the tournament on your own floor, you got to take advantage of it. So, you know, we got a long way to go before we ever get there. But looking down the line, that's going to be something that's really important to these kids and to the coaching staff. So, when February, late February, early March rolls around, we'll. Mm -hmm will hopefully be able to put that to good use. What about the conference? I know you're one of the favorites. Who else do you think uh, might be one of the favorites of the Well, I just think it's hard to tell with yeah. with uh, so many seniors that graduated. You know, Switz 
graduated a bunch of seniors, but their JV team was uh, extremely successful. Uh, Jackson Dell's got the big 6'10 kid that mm -hmm. can dominate any high school basketball game, especially in the ORVC where yeah. you don't have anybody else. Milan's got really, really good athletes. Ripley's always got a reputation of being good, you know. A uh, guy at Rising Sun, I think, does a great job. Mm -hmm. Mike over at Shaw is going to have them uh, much improved. So I just think it's going to be open. Uh, a lot of it will depend on who you're playing and where you have to play them. Yeah. Uh, if you have to go on the road for a couple of tough conference wins, uh, I think that'll be difficult. So I, I think it's open. I think it's wide open for the first time in, in uh, a few years here. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens as we get into that uh, starting the next couple of weeks. You, you want to always build towards the sectional, build towards the tournament coming up at the end of the season. For you, do you have do you have goals, or do you your coaching staff have goals for this team, or what you want to see them do? Yeah, I think we do. And then and then uh, one of the things we'll do after about four games is we sit down with the kids, and after they've had a chance to be on the floor with each other, we give them a little bit of a team evaluation, mm -hmm. and then they'll express uh, their own individual goals, uh, team goals, individuals. Uh, uh, we find out things like, uh, you know, who who do you think is uh, the guy that you want to take the, the tough shot at the end of the game, uh, who are the guys that are you think are the best defensive player. Yeah. Uh, we have a whole series of things that we ask them. We give them a chance to get three or four games under the belt before we do that. But the coaches also have that. Right. And then, uh, you know, we try to mesh those things together. And, you know, sometimes when you do that, you come up with a, with a, a question or so that you, you weren't really sure that existed. And uh, it's helped us over the years to do that. So. And then again, collectively, we put everything together and say, "Okay, now here's here's some reasonable things mm -hmm. that we think we can accomplish." And let's go beyond that a little bit because if you don't set your goals very high and you accomplish them, so what? You right. know, yeah, you accomplished your goals, but they really weren't very high. And these kids have pretty high standards to achieve. So it'll be interesting to see when we get to that what they have in mind and what they're going to write down. You are in your 37th year of coaching basketball. Did you ever envision it being 37 years later after year one? No, not at all. Uh, the thing that's helped a little bit uh, in that course is that there's been two different occasions. Once after about 15 or 16 years, Tim, I took a year off. Mm -hmm. And then I did the same thing a few years ago after leaving Shaw. Um, if, if you go at it like we go at it, uh, sometimes you Mm -hmm. You just got to get away, and then you decide whether you really want to continue this. You know, the last time over at Shaw, I wasn't sure uh, after that fiasco we got beat on that three-quart court shot to go to the semi-state. Right. Uh, and I just thought, you know, maybe it's just all this work and all this uh, effort's not worth it. And then after you're off a year, you think, you know, I think that group of kids, yeah. I think they're going to be okay or yeah. whatever. So uh, each and every time that's happened, being off for that year has really changed my perspective. Um, my wife helps me keep things in perspective. You know, people that don't know my background know that uh, in 1980 I lost my best friend mm -hmm. uh, who actually died uh, at halftime right. in the locker room. Uh, I was his assistant coach and uh, he killed over with a heart attack in front of all of our kids, and at that time we were the number one team in the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a strong impression uh, about what this profession can do to you uh, with the pressure and everything mm -hmm. else if you if you don't put things in perspective. And I probably haven't done a great job of that, uh, or at least as good a job as I should have done. But I've learned over the years with her help that you know there are things that are important: your health and a lot of other things and then all of a sudden you get a group of kids like this that yeah. just make it an absolute joy to even be around so this is going to reinvigorate me at least for a few more years and you know I think it's going to be five yeah. I said that yeah. I'd like to see that eighth grade group through and see what happens and at that time Tim I'll be I think 68 or 69 and it'll be that's eh, probably enough and yeah. we'll go off somewhere and I don't know. I'll, I'll take up something besides coaching. I don't know what the heck that would be because my wife always said you can't do anything else. Yeah. Most people think I can't coach very well. But, um, but we'll just see. We'll see what happens. And right now, the health's been good. And yeah. We'll see what happens. But the, it, this group of kids, they keep you young because they're they're just a joy to be around. And I hope they're listening this morning because yeah. I want them to hear that. I don't always 
I'm not always real good to, at telling them how much I really care and how much I really love them, but yeah. uh, it, it's a really special group out there right now. Coach, I appreciate you coming in this morning. Best of luck tonight and the rest of the season. Thanks, Tim. All right, that's Coach Jerry Baum holding Coach's Corner here at McDonald's on Works 96.7. We'll see you next week. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. I'm Tim Torrance on Works 96.7.